Today we're exploring the once abandoned Fairborn Theater, located in the heart of Fairborn, Ohio. The town of Fairborn was created by combining two villages, the village of Fairfield and Osborne, and the Fairborn Theater was the first local business to use the new town's name. This thousand seat theater was built in 1948, and the first movie played there was Where There's Life. It was built as a single theater, but in 1970, it was remodeled to have two screens and become a twin cinema. The theater operated until the year 2000, or late 1999, and was operated by Shakers. After sitting vacant for a few years, Shakers donated the theater to the Fairborn Arts Organization. And over the next 10 years, they mitigated the asbestos, removed the dividing wall, and did some other minor improvements. But these efforts never gained any real traction long term. So after several years, two friends, Jordan Terrell and Chris Morris, decided to lead the fight to save the derelict theater. And just last year, the Fairborn Phoenix Foundation, a nonprofit organization, was created. Both Jordan and Chris graduated from Fairborn High School and have witnessed firsthand as their classmates battle opioid addiction. Jordan is a documentary filmmaker who premiered his story of two brothers, Heroin, Ohio, in the once abandoned Fairborn Theater. We'll hear more from Jordan here shortly. So we're here, and it's time for a tour of this beautiful old theater. You can see the curved mats built into the floor. Original ticket booth. Think about how many people came through here to buy tickets over the years. It's really humbling. How many families would bring their kids here? You can see there's some old wires up there. And in here, they said that that was probably, they had neon around it, so it would light the dome. My guess is they probably had something similar in here, up there. Here's an old phone booth. All blocked out. The phone is long gone. Definitely an interesting little room. You can see they still have all the letters. And I think my favorite, other than the once occupied, of course, that you saw, is how they would do the. That's pretty cool. And they've got even more up here. And this was behind the curtain where they could put things in the window. Stock candy for the concession. We're in the kitchen. This might sound crazy, but you can literally still smell popcorn butter. In this whole back area. Here's the concession stands. Such a beautiful lobby. 
Look how tall that ceiling is. I'll stand right in the middle. And you can hear the echo. So we're here with Jordan Terrell. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about what your plan is for this property? So we plan on reopening this theater. It'll be a movie theater, a music venue, a community center. We would, you know, we want to host, eventually we want to host films, you know, Monday through Friday. But, you know, in the beginning years, we're going to do a couple events a year. This year, as long as COVID-19 allows us, we're going to throw a Halloween extravaganza. Uh, we're in the process of planning that right now. But eventually, you know, with donations and community fundraisers and community support, we're going to reopen this theater and turn it back to the, the way it used to be. Well, not even the way it used to be, though it'll be a lot cooler than what it used to be. We've got a concession stand, the original colors, white and red. You can see they still have the coming soon boards to showcase the upcoming movies. So you can see we're in the foyer and you can see the decorative plaster work on the ceiling. There would have been a light fixture on both ends. One thing that is still there are these very unique water fountains that we usually only see in churches. So let's head into the woman's bathroom. But before we get to the woman's bathroom, we enter the powder room, where you can see it used to have mirrors on this one wall and lights up above. You don't see that very often, and it's definitely pretty interesting. And then we enter the woman's bathroom. That's right, no admittance. Before we check out the theater, let's head upstairs and check out the projector room. You can see outside. Let's head upstairs. One showing, Saturday matinee. So here, we're in the real room. R-E-E-L. 
where they would hold the reels of film. And here's one of the original carts, or here's one of the original stands that would hold a reel of film. And it's still unknown why there was a shower in this room. Here's some of the original packaging that the reels would come in. It also looks like this is where they would store snacks. And you can see the prices still on the shelves. Here we've got the projector room. The paint peeling off the vent is very, very cool. Looks like this was one of the rooms that would maybe control the lights. Not really sure, there's a, a big electric motor or generator in this room. And you can see, here's the original 35 millimeter projector. It's still here. And the current owners are working to bring this back to life. You can see we can look out into the theater. It's estimated to cost several million dollars to restore this theater back to its former glory. So if you'd like to make a donation, check out the PayPal me link in the description below or check out fairbornphoenix.com where you can collaborate, donate, and volunteer. We're exploring today with HBC Films. Check them out on Instagram at HBC Films. You're not allowed to change your name now. <laughs> you can see Scrappers really had a heyday on a lot of the you know facilities equipment left here cutting out a lot of copper to steel and scrap here's the old ac compressor that would air condition this facility You can see the heads were probably aluminum, so the scrappers took them off to scrap. Look how big those pistons are. So 
So over that 20 year period, when the building wasn't maintained or looked after, homeless people actually made a camp and you can see what's left. There's some obvious drug paraphernalia and a fax machine. And you can see this is the way up to the top of the sign. Let's head back downstairs. This theater was originally a thousand seats. And at one point, it was separated into two theaters, two movie theaters where they didn't use the stage and they would just have one theater on this side and one theater on this side. The one on the right was substantially larger because it was longer. The original seating was all removed. So through donations and some purchasing, they obtained church pews. The blue and orange is definitely a unique look. You can even see the original wall that someone put in to separate the two theaters. But it was renovated at some point to remove it and bring it back to its original architecture, which was one large theater. The walls on the bottom portion, where you can see the wood, that would have had fabric, probably black fabric. Some of the original curtains are still hanging and a lot of the colors are also original. So the pink, white, purple, and then the blue. And this logo is definitely interesting. Looks like 70s or 80s, maybe. And uh, no one is really sure what that logo is. So if you know what that is, let us know. The voice of the theater. It'll be exciting to see this place back in action. Sign your bank eligibility, bank night eligibility cards here. I wonder what that is. Let's head up there and check it out. It's better to be present and happy than absent and sorry. I agree. I don't know what this thing was either. If you know what this sign was, let us know. Bank night, every Friday and Saturday, continuous shows. So you can see these holes in the floor and they're actually in the concrete. And what they are is they're 
air conditioning vents. Definitely interesting. If you guys like this video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, let us know what you think in the comments below, and as always, be safe out there!